Jesus said the days of the Great Tribulation would be cut short. But in Daniel and Revelation, it seems the number of those days was divinely commanded. This is one of the greatest mysteries and controversies of the Bible. How can a divinely ordained number of days be cut short? Wouldn't this be a contradiction of two Bible prophecies? Well, today we're going to find out what Jesus truly meant. And we'll do it by letting Scripture interpret Scripture. This community doesn't trust human opinions to decide issues like this. Rather, we search the Bible and let it provide the answers for us. However, how do you find the scriptures that apply? That's what this channel is all about. In today's video, we'll help you discover those scriptures. We need to start in the Old Testament. The prophet Daniel was told how long the power of God's enemy, the Antichrist or Little Horn, would be. He will speak out against the Most High and wear down the saints of the Highest One. And he will intend to make alterations in times and law. And they will be given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. This is similar to what Revelation says about the Antichrist's power. Authority to act for 42 months was given to him. This 42-month period is the same three and a half years as time, times, and half a time. It is also thought to be approximately equal to 1260 days, and this is the time that most consider to be the Great Tribulation. This is perhaps the greatest reason that most followers of Jesus believe the rapture has to happen either before this 3.5 year period or after, but that it couldn't possibly happen during it. Yet what Jesus has to say in Matthew 24 seems to contradict those divinely ordained prophecies. For then there will be great tribulation such as not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. Unless those days have been cut short, no flesh would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. So how can two separate prophecies in Daniel and Revelation say one thing? And yet in Matthew, Jesus says those days will be cut short. It seems like it's something else. Did God change his mind and rescind his prophecies? Hardly. So what does all this mean? Let's begin by looking at Jesus' statement in Matthew 24 to see what he said and what he didn't say. First, let's look at the term Great Tribulation. Here is what Jesus said. Then there will be great tribulation. He didn't say how long it would last. He didn't say it would be 42 months, or 1260 days, or any length in that passage. That is a pretty big shock to most viewers who automatically think the great tribulation is equal to those number of days. But that is an assumption on all our parts that the Great Tribulation equals that certain number of days in Daniel or Revelation. Nowhere in Scripture are we told the Great Tribulation is a certain number of days or months or years. Scripture leaves the length vague. However, it is a certain number of days because Jesus calls it those days. Twice in Matthew 24, 22, and then again in Matthew 24, 29. And Jesus said, those days are cut short. Jesus uses a term our English Bibles calls cut short. In Greek, this word is kolabo, which means to amputate. In 2 Samuel 4, 12, the same word is used for David's men, cutting off the hands and feet of several Israelites, punishing them for killing Ishbosheth, who was the son of Saul. So the word definitely means to shorten from its original length. So there is no doubt that those days of the Great Tribulation are intended to be a certain length and that that length of days will be shortened. Does that mean that God changed his mind and rescinded his previous and future prophecies about timing? Future since Revelation hadn't even been written 
at the point that Jesus gave this prophecy? Well, obviously not, because that would be a contradiction, and this community believes the Bible is without error. So, what are the possibilities? Well, one possibility is that the Great Tribulation was originally intended to be longer than 1260 days and was shortened to that length. The other possibility is that it was intended to be 1260 and was shortened to a length that was less than that. First, let's look at the idea that the length of the Great Tribulation was originally intended to be longer than 1260 days and shortened back to that length. If so, who intended it to be longer? The very idea of a length of a great persecution of God's people was first mentioned in Daniel 7.25 and by God's messenger angel. So only God knew about that length at that time. This would mean that God intended a longer length, but changed his mind to 1260 days. That isn't a possible interpretation, not at all. A better meaning is that God prescribed a time of 1260 days for the Antichrist to have authority, but the time of the persecution of a group Jesus calls the elect would be shorter than that. So both things would be true at the same time. Let's see how that might work. In Revelation 13, we read that authority to act was given to the Antichrist. But that's a pretty general statement. Could the Antichrist continue to act in a variety of other ways after he was no longer persecuting the saints? Persecuting the saints, after all, was only one of four things that the Antichrist could do according to Daniel. There were three others. In this scenario, he would still be able to blaspheme God. He could still attempt to make changes to the appointed times or feasts of the Lord. And he could still attempt to make changes to the law, which is the commandments. So there's really nothing in Revelation 13 that says that this scenario is impossible. Later in Revelation 13, we read, It was also given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation was given to him. Again, the timing of this war on the saints is not given. So in both cases, Revelation isn't a factor in this issue. Only Daniel 7.25 says anything about timing. He will speak out against the Most High and wear down the saints of the Highest One, and he will intend to make alterations in time and in law, and they will be given into his hand for a time, time, and half a time. But this doesn't say that Christians will be given into the hands of the Antichrist for the entire 1260 days, does it? No, it doesn't. Saints in this context were Jews and could be extended to Christians, but not necessarily. So if Christians were raptured at the sixth seal, six years into the 70th week of Daniel, and prior to three and a half years, this passage would still make sense because the Jews would be persecuted for the entire period, the unsaved Jews, that is. However, what if time, times, and half a time didn't even have to apply to the wearing down of God's people? Might we be reading Daniel 7.25 incorrectly and making a giant assumption? That assumption centers on the word they. Who are the they referring to? The they that are given into his hands. Nearly everyone has assumed it refers to the saints and that they are given into the hands of the Antichrist for time, times, and half a time. But is that true? Normally, in English, when trying to figure out what a pronoun is referring to, the general rule of thumb is that it refers to the nearest previous noun or nouns. In that case, it would be the change in time and law, 
that would be given into the Antichrist for three and a half years. The changes in law and times would be the they. Now you might say, well, maybe, but they usually refers to people. But what if you found out the pronoun they doesn't even appear in the original Aramaic language of the verse? The phrase, and they shall be given, is actually just a single word in the Aramaic. The word Yahab, and it means to give or to be given. The word they was added by English translators to make it make more sense in the English. It doesn't mean that this verse was mistranslated, but unfortunately, the extra words here added a twist to the meaning which has become part of Christian culture. The phrase should read, he will speak out against the most high and wear down the saints of the highest one. And he will intend to make alterations in time and in law given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. That changes the meaning a lot, doesn't it? Now you can see it is the alterations in time and law that will be given into his hands for three and a half years. There is no they in the passage to deflect the meaning back to the saints. So nowhere in scripture is there a verse that definitively says the saints are persecuted for three and a half years. Jesus wasn't contradicting the book of Daniel at all. So let's just say that one more time to let it sink in. The word they does not appear in the original Aramaic of Daniel 7.25. So nowhere in scripture is there a link between the persecution of the saints for a full three and a half years. This changes everything. By the way, I need to thank John McVeigh for that very important piece of understanding about the Aramaic. Thanks, John. Now, when are those days of the Great Tribulation cut short? Jesus tells us specifically seven verses later. But immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. There is that identical phrase, those days we saw in Matthew 24:22. Those days of the Great Tribulation are cut short by the darkening of the sun, moon, and stars, which is the sixth seal of Revelation. Not only is there a parallel in terms of the words those days, but also in the term the elect or the chosen. Remember that Jesus said that those days of the Great Tribulation would be cut short for the sake of the elect. Now. After the darkening of the sun, moon, and stars in Matthew 24, 31, we see the elect again. He will send forth his angels with a great trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. So the days of the great tribulation are cut short for the sake of the elect. And then after the sixth seal, when the signs and the sun, moon, and stars take place, they are gathered together or raptured by Jesus' angels. However, the Antichrist still has the power to act for another year. How can that be? How could the Antichrist still retain some power after the return of Jesus in the sky in great glory and probably a return to the earth? If we look at 2 Thessalonians 2.8, we read these words, And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. So Jesus does two things to the Antichrist. He decreases his power upon the brightness of his coming, and at a later date, he kills him. The Greek word for bring to nothing or decreases his powers is kataraigo, which means to render idle, useless, or ineffective. 
If you look at it logically, these two things, killing and making the Antichrist ineffective or useless, they can't happen at the same time. If Jesus were to immediately kill the Antichrist, there would be no reason to decrease his power. He's already dead. The decrease in power needs to happen first. In Revelation 16, 13 through 16, we read that Satan, the Antichrist, the false prophet, each send out evil spirits to gather the kings of the earth to fight Armageddon. Now, if the Antichrist were still in charge, he could order the armies to gather. But because his power has been diminished, he needs demonic assistance. So when Jesus talked about the 1260 days being cut short, he was talking about Daniel 725 and the time, times, and half a time, those days. He was explaining to the disciples who would have understood this passage that there were four things that the Antichrist would be given power over. And in one of those items, the persecution of the saints, that those days would be cut short. And they would be cut short only for the elect, for the Christians, for his followers. I would assume this has really sparked some interest in you about what happens in that year between Jesus' return to the earth and when he finally kills the Antichrist. Well, click right here to keep watching and we'll show you the scriptures that detail that year and all the exciting events that most churches have no idea about. And if you click right here, we'll share the entire playlist of Matthew 24 with you so you can see Jesus' explanation of the end times. Till then, this is Nelson and I'll see you there.